Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, and congratulations to making it to the summary portion of writing an, equa writing an equation for a parabola um, in conic sections. And what I'd like to do is just kind of go over uh, the process again that we used in this course, as well as end up with some common tips and tricks and some common mistakes that I have hoped that maybe you can relate to in this course, but that I've seen with my own students. Um, first of all, so when we're graph, when we're looking into writing the equation, we're going to be provided some information. And basically, what I have tried to instill with you in this course course is to plot the information on a graph, right? Even though you're not graphing, write the information on the graph so you can identify where exactly the axis of symmetry is and what equation you're going to be using. Once you know what equation you're going to be using, look to identify the vertex and the value of p. Once you know the vertex and value of p, plug them into your equation, and then you can go ahead and simplify, and then you're done. Um, it sounds a lot easier than it really is, right? Um, so let's go and go through some common tips and tricks. Now, uh, the tips and tricks are pretty much what I tell you to do, uh, so they're not like amazing tips and tricks, but I can't, uh, I can't emphasize how much I see students making mistakes is when, they, when I see them not plotting the information. If I ask a student to write an equation and I don't see the plotted point, I can see why a lot of times they made their mistakes is when they didn't do what I said for them to do. So write the information. If it says here's the focus and here's the vertex, Plot those points. Write a little dot for focus and the vertex on a Cartesian on a on a graph. Um, write down that information. The next thing is once you determine your equation, you know, is it a an equation with a horizontal axis symmetry or a vertical axis symmetry? Once you determine that, write down the equation in on your sheet of paper because you're bound just to forget it or confuse it with another equation when you actually start writing it down. So write down the equation so you can go off of it. Now let's kind of get into some common mistakes. First one, number one, is writing down the wrong equation. All right, just remember, ladies and gentlemen, when you have a vertical axis symmetry, that's just like the quadratics you've always been dealing with. Y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, or y equals a times x minus h squared plus k. It's very, very, it's the same equation. So anytime you have that vertical axis symmetry, you know that your x is going to be squared. Anytime you have the horizontal axis symmetry, you know your y is going to be squared. Next thing is determining the value of p. Now, this one kind of gets confusing sometimes to students because remember, when p is positive, that means that distance from, if you have your vertex at the center and you have a vertical horizontal axis or vertical axis symmetry, if p is positive, then you're going to go up. If p is negative, you go down. If you have a horizontal axis of symmetry and p is positive, you're going to move to, to the right to find the focus, and you're going to move, and if it's negative, you move to the left to find the focus. The reason where students get mixed up is remember, <coughs> excuse me, the distance from my center to my focus is the same absolute distance as the distance from my center to my directrix, right? But we use the value and the sign of p to kind of take us to where exactly the focus is going to be. But we can take that exact same distance in the opposite direction to help us find the directrix. And the last thing is opposite of h and k. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, um, that when we're dealing with h and k, remember it's x minus x opposite of h, right? There's two formulas. I'll just do one. x opposite of h squared equals 4p y opposite of k. Opposite of h, opposite of k. The vertex is just h comma k. So if you have an equation x minus 3 squared, then h is equal to 3. It's not equal to negative 3. It's x opposite of h. x opposite of 3. So that means h is equal to 3. And if you had equals 4p times y plus 1, well, we can still write that as y opposite of 1, right? So we can write that as y opposite of negative 1. So therefore, k would equal negative 1. So a very common mistake still gets a lot of students um, from there. But there you go, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you came out of this course with some uh, extra instruction on how to write an equation for a parabola. Thanks.